from the Eclectic Gamer to talk about what we did in August. Yay! Yay! Yay. Um, so first off, I want to mention that the Eclectic Gamer website is go- getting a makeover in September. It's been a long time coming. Uh, yeah, it yeah. really has. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the third iteration now. Um, no. It's going to be way faster. We're really excited about it. Uh, so you can check it out at theeclecticgamer.com. Uh, and now our first segment is board games. Board games we um, played this month. So first off, Ooh. we're excluding the games that we played at Gen Con because we already covered that in the Gen Con recap videos. So go check those go out. Go watch those. They're fun. If, uh, if you want to see what we played there. Yeah. Um, and otherwise, uh, what game do you want to start with, Adam? Ooh. Mansions of Madness was so cool. It really was. I loved it. Uh, so Mansions of Madness, second edition, uh, was released at Gen Con. We had pre-ordered it uh, just because we didn't want to get in the fantasy flight line. And Adam really wanted it. <laughs> yeah. Um, long story short is it's it's like the first one, except instead of having a keeper be the overlord, it uh, has an app that does it. And it's really well integrated. It tells a really cool story. Uh, it's a lot like a role-playing game. Uh like a tabletop role playing game you're like trying to figure it out you're also trying to fight you're trying to avoid fights it's just really cool there's a we have a full gameplay video of it up on the on the YouTube page. yes uh, you can watch us play the second scenario uh, and lose horribly spoilers, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah it was, it's super fun I'm really looking forward to playing uh, the next scenarios as well as trying to re-beat the second scenario yeah um fair word of warning it took us probably uh an extra hour on top of what it said the expected serial link yeah, was i don't know if that's because we were recording and we were explaining a lot more than we normally would be but um it's definitely a lengthy game yeah so, so the next game that we're going to talk about for august is called city of spies uh Esteril 1942. I don't know how to say that. Um, a little bit more than it, but whatever. I, uh, yeah, I think it's, I, I think they added City of Spies for the American release because n- we're uh, ignorant and don't know, uh, <laughs> and don't know about the city as evidenced by my lack of knowing how to pronounce it. Um, so this was unexpected for us. We won this game. Um, so we decided to give it a try, not really knowing much about it. It was than, sort of on your radar, right? It was right? sort of on my radar because I, I think pretty it was a Stronghold game, um, which is a publisher that I watch, and it uh, was uh, spy-themed, which is a theme that I always like, although this one's historically themed, which um, I thought was pretty cool. Uh, it does to, have a lot of references as in the to, character cards. It like, does. Like the Ian Fleming card. And, yeah. So, and then there's a lot of, like, um, older movie stars, uh, which I really got into. Um, but it's an, it's an interesting area control game uh, where basically you're trying to build the best pool of six agents uh, to score at the end, but you do so by playing your agents on these locations uh, and trying to uh, win them over the other people. And they all have powers, like being able to seduce other people away from their areas or assassinate assassinate them or... I will say it's six spies for two players and then it shrinks down for more players. We've only played a two-player, so I forgot about It's a cool two-player game, though. Yeah, it is. Um, But it's a nice nice puzzle game. It's relatively short. It plays under an hour. Um, I thought that the powers were pretty Uh, well-themed. Like... The different locations um, were also themed, like at the beach, nobody's playing um, with hidden roles because you can't hide anything at the beach. Uh, there's and, just and The strategy goes really cool too, because there's eight areas, but you only put six of them down. Mm-hmm. And so, in the first area, to act, they activate an order, but if the church is out, no one can assassinate people from the church. Right, so like the it's, the it's beneficial to, to assassinate at the beginning, but the church is the first one to go, and you actually can't assassinate anybody there. So, but you can put your diplomatic community people in the church to give diplomatic immunity to people in other areas. So they can't be assassinated by the second area, and it's it's got a lot of surprising depth to it for yeah. relatively simple rules. Yeah, like, first game we're like, oh, what's going on? Second game we're like, oh, I could do this and this and this and this and this. What do I do? <laughs> yeah. Um. So anyway, we really um yeah, that, that was a surprise hit for us. Um, so, uh, do you want to talk about Vast? 
I do want to talk about. So Vast was like we talked about it a little bit. We hadn't played it, uh, but it was like the surprise kind of oh this is a cool game of Gen Con, where it's asymmetric. One person plays the knight who's trying to kill the dragon. One person plays the dragon who's trying to, uh, you know, wake up from his slumber and escape. Someone plays the goblin who's trying to kill the knight. Someone plays the thief who's trying to steal stuff from everybody. Someone person plays the cave everyone is in. And tries to grow to be a big cave and then collapse. And so we actually got to play it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, well, we, you did. I only played half of a learning game. So yeah, we played a learning game. Yet. I played it with a uh, four-player game. And it's really neat. Uh, it's funny because everyone wants to be the cave because the cave is cool. And the cave, I think, has a super advantage when people don't know what's going on. Because the cave wins by stalling the game out. Right. And when people don't know what's going on, no one wins. And the cave wins. Uh, but the asymmetry is really cool and really neat. Um, it's a little finicky and it's hard to teach because... Everybody's can't teach the same. rule set is different. Completely different, so yeah. It's really, I think it's hard, particularly when everybody's new to it, and since it's a new game, everybody's going to be new to it. So, But uh, it's definitely one that's going to benefit from additional replays, but the the complete asymmetry. Now, a lot of times you talk about asymmetry, it's just like, oh, I have this power that gives me plus one on this, and you have this power right. that gives you an extra action, and it's just like, oh, it's asymmetry, wow. But this is literally like you're all playing completely different games that just happen to be on the same board. Yeah. It seems a little crazy. It, it is crazy, but it's cool. So I'm glad I'm glad you're excited about it. Um, Full I'm name is Bash the Crystal Caverns. Yeah, I'm looking forward to playing an actual game of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but okay. we, you didn't play it because we had a bunch of people over, and while we were playing Vast, we were playing Islebound. Yeah. So Islebound is the new Red Raven game. Uh, and which Stephanie loves. Which I yeah, which is a publisher <laughs> I love. Um, a lot of the games have similar mechanics, and um, there it. I think it's pretty fun. I think that this this is like an area control uh, version of a Red Raven game, or a Red Raven game version of an area control game. It's like um, partway between area control and 4x. It's not quite 4x, but you do like you don't you don't explore because nothing goes out, but you do right. try to get to the other areas and take them over and get new technologies that helps you out. And, yeah, that's why I was thinking of it as an area control game. So you're playing um, sailors, which to me everybody was just pirating. Um, obviously. And you're trying to uh, take over cities, which you could do either by attacking them or you could do uh, by diplomatizing with them. And the attacking... Which is totally a word. Uh, right. Uh, and the attacking <laughs> is that you uh, you gain control of, of pirates. And, and sea serpents. Sea serpents. <laughs> Um, and then you roll and you try to uh, take them over that way. Or you can do things that um, build up influence on an influence track. And then you can spend that influence on the diplomacy action to take over um, towns. And whenever you do that, you get money. And then you can spend the money uh, on different things that are different types of buildings that you can build. I think it's supposed to be in your capital city except there's no location on the board that's really your capital city. Because even if um, all your cities got taken over, you still have all your buildings. Right. So um, that I felt that that was a little bit destroyed. But um, but that's how basically how you're going to make the most victory points is by what buildings you have. Uh, and then ultimately uh, you're trying to get the most victory points uh, by building the most buildings. Um, I thought it was pretty I thought it was pretty fun. I enjoy uh, most run Raven games. So, uh, this one played very similar to previous ones. Um, we've only played the beginner uh, side of it. I'm looking forward to playing the advanced side. Um, and I enjoy the pirating theme. There's a little bit of pick up and deliver, sort of, because you had to like go to, you had you missions, did, to different you had areas. missions to different areas. So, you could do that. But um, every, every kind of one of those games that I've played before has taken at least three hours, and this plays easily under two, so Definitely I enjoyed that. It was really quick. Yeah, I enjoyed that aspect as well. Um, and, of course, the art is really beautiful. So. so the one thing I thought was really interesting about it is you have a lot of these games where you have people have different areas, whether they're tokens or tiles or cities or whatever, and when you get your city taken over, it's really rough. You go like, right. like it does a big swing, it gives them the thing, it takes away your things, you lose your stuff, and it's really like, it's both disheartening and like tactically it's weird, and then sometimes they, a lot of times they will rely on, you know, ganging up on a leader. But this one, it's like, when the person takes it over, Like your get, starting port is what you're talking about? Or just no, the, all cities, the, the cities in All general. the cities that you get, yeah. So like when someone takes it over, they get gold from the general pool, they don't take your money. Right. And then they take it over... And then they have access to that town's action for free. Right, but, but you can still pay the entry bonus 
to it's take like, that. It's like a coin or something, right? Yeah, so, to, take, to take that action. And not only that, but every time you take over a city, you generate money. So in the game that, we, um, that I was playing while you were playing Bass, uh, I had taken over one city that gave me bonus influence, and then somebody else took it over, uh, and then I just retook it back from them. Um, and no one was with really my hurt influence. that much, Nobody right? was really hurt by it, and I got double money because I took it over twice. So, in a way, that actually benefited me. Yeah, so it's like, when someone takes over your town, you're not like, oh my god, I lost all this stuff. You're like, oh, I lost immediate access to that thing for free, but then I could take it over and get money back anyway. So, like, if I take it over and you take it over, we both got money, and so we're both happy about it, essentially. <laughs> so, it's... It, it provided a good twist on that kind of game because it didn't people didn't get upset when you attacked them as much. That yeah, that's true. And you true. kind of still do your own thing, and attacking people didn't totally mess up other people's plans. Right. So yeah, that I, that was a unique twist. I feel like the Red Raven games always provide a neat twist on a um, genre that already exists. Yeah. So I enjoyed it. Um, okay, so some of the other games that we got to play this month that uh, are less new. I'm gonna let you down. Um, or less prominent games. So we got in um, several games of Clask. This is Stephanie's, like, favorite and possibly only dexterity game she really likes. Because um, it doesn't involve yeah, flicking with your hands. Yeah, it's pretty accurate. So it's like air hockey, except with a little bit more strategy. It's small and compact and easy to travel with and a lot cheaper. And it's not that easy to travel with. Well, well the, the, compared to air hockey, it is. Compared to air <laughs> hockey, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, you don't hurt your hand in the process. Yeah, you got this little wand that's magnetized. So you hold it from under, but the thing on top moves, obviously, because it's magnet. You just bat a ball back and forth and try to get it in the goal. There's yeah. little magnets that get stuck and with extra rules, but... Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the basic gist of it, and it's pretty fun. And I think you can get it at Target now, which is yeah, we saw it there. pretty exciting. Um, okay, so we also played Last Well, which is a game that we got in the... Board Game uh, Geek Math Trade. Board Game Geek Math Trade at Gen Con. Um, so this one this was... This one you've been looking at for a while, and it was like hard to get? I don't know. It's not hard to get. It's oh, just, okay. uh, it was never something that I felt like we needed to buy. But it's a, it's a worker placement game. It's like a gateway worker placement Euro game. Uh, where you are trying to, uh, you have a pool of money and you're trying to spend it as um, quickly as possible, which you do by buying buildings and uh, letting them decay and selling them and taking your horses out to dinner and uh, <laughs> other, other silly things. But you, um, yeah, you go out to dinner, you go to theater, you and you hire sh private chefs and yeah, so try to spend your money as quickly as possible. I thought it was pretty fun. I thought that... Um, in some ways, I was hoping that it would almost be sillier. Like, obviously, you're taking your your horse out to dinner, which is pretty silly. But then you just keep doing that over and over again. Yeah, they're pretty uh, generic actions. Yeah, like they could. It was a little generic. They could be anything, right? It could, like, it, you know, it seemed like it was sort of old timey set, right? Some think they were. Yeah, I don't know. But like, yeah. it, it could easily have been. You know, you go to the arcade, you buy an expensive bicycle, or what? You know, it didn't really matter what they were. Yeah, so I was, I kind of was hoping that there'd be a little bit more variety. It was like, you go to the theater, you go out to eat, you... It's fun, um, though. The, uh, the twist you that you're, ride, uh, the twist that you're trying to get rid of your money as opposed to gain the money was, was just sort of thematically interesting. Yeah. Um, we only got to play it once, so I feel like I have to play it again before I can get, like, a real review of it. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was silly and fun, and a nice lighter weight game. Probably the worst game we played <laughs> by far was Oregon Trail, a card game that you can get at Target. Um, I died. Of, someone died of dysentery. That's what. That's how what happens. Yes. It's really a bad game. It's really just it's, a big joke on yeah. like how hard Oregon Trail was. It's not. It's not really a game. It's yeah, just, you barely do just, anything. You're just like I you play just a card. Draw, yeah, and then you draw a card and it says you die, and you're like, okay, I died. I'm yeah. out. It does Are play there, another under what ten minutes. So <laughs> yeah, it's. It's silly. It's barely but... a game. It it's it's fun for a laugh. Um, yeah. I'm glad we didn't buy it. Me too. <laughs> uh, and finally, um, probably the game I'm most excited that we bought. Oh, you're pumped about this. Uh, one. Is Think Straight. Uh, this is a import um, from Germany, I think, from Hutch Games. Um, but we got it through Miniature Market. And this one is just it's a light uh, deductive game where if you have a set of tiles in front of you similar with numbers on them similar to code 777 you're trying to figure out what numbers you have in front of you uh, and you do that by uh, 
rolling some dice with some colors and then trying to guess what the sum of all those colors are in a range and then the other players have to tell you whether you're too low or too high. So for example, if my, my red one is a five, but I don't know that, everyone else can see it because it's facing out, uh, and my blue one is a three and my green one is a zero, my total of those numbers is eight. So if that, that's what we roll on the dice and I guess, I go, okay, it could be anywhere, because the numbers go from zero to seven, so it could be anywhere from zero to 21. I guess that it, you have these different range tokens, and I go, so I guess that it is between 13 and 18, and they go, oh, you're too high. So I know that some of those three numbers is less than 13. Yeah, and, and then when you get it wrong, you have to discard one of them. So right. so I go, okay, I'll discard my green one. I'm like, okay, so I knew that one was a, a three, I think I said. So that means I know that the sum of red and blue is less than 10, and so then now I can deduce things. And then the next time we roll, maybe I get green purple and blue and then I can try to guess from that and yeah it, it, it's really and then you can see the other people saying so you can rule some of the numbers out and right it's like code 777 but good but good yeah we weren't a big fan of it um because I felt like there's no agency you were kind of stuck with whatever card you, yeah, you literally just drew the card and asked the question and then you tried to deduce things but yeah there was and I don't know no if agency. it was because we were always playing with other computer scientists but everybody pretty much got the logic like perfect 100% of the time so. yeah it was literally like you sit there and go okay I know the information I know and there was if everyone gets it right which is a big if then it was literally just who got the better card for their situation right whereas this one you had agency you could choose you always got to choose to flip over one color of the die so that you could try to match it up uh, as best as possible. I also enjoyed that it's a good auction game that you can play with only two players. Yeah. That way I'm not trying to convince like a whole gaggle of people to play deduction games with me all the time. I only yeah. have to convince you. <laughs> um, so there was a lot of things I liked about it. Uh, yeah. The one thing that is really important to note, I think, is that the components are oh. um, pretty bad. The, uh, it's like someone printed it out on cardstock at home. Yeah, that you, it's like cereal box uh, it's cardboard. Than like it's just not yeah I guess it is it's really, um, really bad it's a uh, it's uh, which makes it cheap but That's true. <laughs> which is which is a benefit to... um but I am afraid that we're going to like mar the cards somehow yeah. very easily and that would kind of ruin I mean uh, part of me is like the game can I go get like mahjong tiles or something that we can use that like or, or something of that like Thickness yeah. or quality that we could use so, to replace uh, these. Yeah, I, I am like interested in upgrading it so that it, it doesn't um, fare so poorly. Yeah. But uh, but the game itself, uh, I was a big fan of. Yeah. So. All right. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about Shadows of Brimstone. We did not play this. Shadows game. of Brimstone. Yes, I always want to say Shadows over Brimstone. It's of. E yes, correct. I guess shadows aren't over things. No, that, that makes would sense. be kind of weird. Um, but I bought the two starter sets. It's something I've been interested in a, in a while. I don't think I mentioned this in our Gen Con video, but I went to the Flying Frog booth, and so we originally wanted. I originally was interested in this, and some of our friends at the big Kickstarter. But for whatever reason, they put four characters in each starter set. Only one of them was female. And they said they were going to release resin miniatures for both genders for all the classes, but that didn't come out until a much later thing. So I basically wrote it off. So I'm like, if I'm going to get Stephanie to play with this at all, she needs to have more than one character as an option. Right. Even though I will, pro the one female character it comes with is the saloon girl. I and, got both of them. So there's one in each, but yeah, I the other probably, one's a rancher. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and I will probably end up playing the saloon girl anyway. <laughs> but it was the principle of the thing. Right. And so we're kind of just like, oh, well, this is not worth investing in because if we get interested in it and someone wants to play something else, then, like, she, she's stuck in a rock and a hard place. Now at least we can buy them. Like, there are previews for the models. I, I should pick some of them up. But we have the option at least. So I'm like, okay, I'll pick it up. We'll get it started. Uh, I've been starting to put together the models. Uh, they're interesting because as far as hobby models go, they're, like, some of the easiest to do that I've ever seen because they're made for, like, beginners. But as far as board game miniatures go, it's, like, way above right because <laughs> right, you have, you so have you to clip have them to out you have work. to yeah. yeah so it's this weird you middle need ground specialized tools to do it and i mean yeah. you can use some other stuff but yeah like you want specific kind of glue and so i've been putting those together just interested in it um i feel like there might be some people might be interested in how to assemble them since i imagine a lot of board gamers aren't used to that so I'll maybe do a video of it let me know if you're interested in that uh but it seems pretty interesting and all the re research I did on it that made me go, okay, yeah, this is for me. It was like, yeah, it's like it's like a dungeon crawl stuff, but just crazy stuff happens. You throw dice, and it's fun, and it's silly, and the plot isn't huge, like Imagines of Madness. Like, it's not, like, really well-crafted. 
but it's like crazy stuff happens to you and you have fun with your friends and I'm like okay I, can, I, I have a place for that game right my uh the reason I wasn't jumping all over it when it first came out is because I think it might feel a little bit too similar to other Flying Frog games and we have both uh, a touch of evil and fortune and glory and I yeah. love particularly fortune and glory I love uh, the theme of that and, yeah you don't, you're uh, not too big on I'm not, weird west or wild west stuff yeah exactly so I part of me is going to be like do I really want to be playing this when I can be playing uh, fortune and glory if I'm just going to be randomly checking dice around and crazy yeah. stuff happening I always like the oh my U-boat opens yeah. onto a nightclub and now I'm in a mountain expedition uh, nature of it is good. fortune and glory so yeah so but it's interesting we'll see how it goes mm-hmm Cool. Okay. Um, so, a couple board game items that we're excited to play in September. Um, we've got Captain Sonar and Dragon and Flagon coming. Um, so, we'll be talking about that hopefully in Eclectic Gaming September. We talked about Eclectic. We talked about uh, Captain Sonar in the Gen Con preview since I played it. So, if you want right. to know my thoughts on it, check that out. But otherwise, we know nothing about Dragon and Flagon other than it looks cool and the angle steeds are awesome. <laughs> yeah, who are who designed it? So. Yeah, and. Um, Did you mention the Imperial Assault app? I have not yet. So uh, it was announced that Fantasy Flight will be putting out a an app for Imperial Assault that is supposed to make a co-op. Now, we loved Descent uh, version 1, no. uh, but when we moved, we lost our Descent group. Um, and we haven't been able to get a good group together for to be able to play um, Imperial Assault. And we love the Star Wars theme. So we should really like Muriel Assault. Um, we just haven't had the opportunity, and we don't like playing one versus one against each other yeah. with those style of games. Now, hopefully the co-op app will allow us to play together, just the two of us, uh, and be able to finally play our Imperial Assault. <laughs> it would be exciting. Yeah. Cool. Um, and we So we've been doing this interesting thing where we've been... So we, we'd always play, every week we'd play with our brothers, and we would play Star Wars The Old Republic. Um, it's an MMO, but it's got like a, it's a Bioware MMO, so it's got a story to it. Mm-hmm. We'd play through, and we'd play through, and we kind of, we maxed out one set of characters, and we were working on another, and we kind of like, we're getting a little bored with it, because we'd played it for years. Like every week <laughs> like for... Like literally since it came out. Yeah. Um, um, and the, the new expansion, you couldn't play as a group very easily, so that kind of... Yeah, we tried, we, we got excited about it, and then we tried to level up to the expansion level, and then we discovered you couldn't even play it as a group, which was really disappointing. So we needed something else to play online. We've tried a couple other games. We tried, um, what was the cthulhu Oh, we tried The Secret World. Yeah, which was really um, cool. Which was cool, but also hard to play as a group. Yeah. Um, it was a little awkward. Unfortunately. It wasn't designed for that. Yeah, it just wasn't designed for it. Um, and your brother hated it. <laughs> also that. Uh, we, did we try any, did we try any other online games like that? Like um, MMOs? Or I don't think so. Well, Diablo, but I don't like Diablo because to me it's just grinding all the time and really boring. Yeah. So we were trying to figure out what to play because we want to keep playing with the brothers. So we ended up, Stephanie was looking into like online board games you can play, whether it's on... Uh, like official versions on Steam or Android apps. And or... I know we mentioned this last month that we had started playing Kanavi with them. Yeah, so uh, we've done that a lot more this month, so it's pretty cool. So what yeah, else, what else so we've we done played? Ticket to Ride. Uh, we did Small World. We've Ticket done... to Ride on Steam, Small World on Steam. Yep, we've done um, Hinabi and Takaido, I think. On... They're both on apps or websites. They were on so websites. Which ones. Yeah, I don't And uh, Concordia. And, and also Concordia, yeah. So that's going on pretty um, well. It's, so now it's we've fun to bought, play those. and now we've bought t- tabletop simulator. So we're looking forward to trying out some of the games on that as well. Yeah. So, do we have zombies out for that? Not yet. I want some. Okay. <laughs> um. All right. Um. So now, uh, role playing. You yeah. Guys been... So we uh, we're in a transition period. So we're just finishing up the Serpent Skull uh, adventure for, first PDF adventure path for Pathfinder, and then we're going to switch GMs. We do that on Mondays on Twitch. It won't be this. Monday, because or by the time this comes out, it will be this Monday. But yeah, we'll be, well, Labor Day, we're not gonna do it. But then we're gonna be starting up Mouse Guard again. Uh, we had done the fall season of Mouse Guard. Now we're gonna go into the summer. Uh, it's a silly, fun game based on the comics, and yeah, it's cool. So check that out on Mondays. It's going well. And then we've done we actually we've done a video game together this month. We we kind of we go in waves of that sometimes. Sort of, yeah. So we I mean we started playing Undertale. We're about an hour into it. Yeah. We're not very far into it. We um, restarted, and then it was weird, but... Yeah. 
Yeah, we accidentally thing. killed. I forgot her name. Um, I don't know what spoilers anymore for this game. Yeah, I don't know. We killed we killed somebody at the beginning that we didn't want to kill, so then we went back uh, to weird. not kill her, yeah. and then the game mocked us for going back and starting over. Yeah. Um. So I don't know where that's gonna lead. So this game's weird because every review I've told about it is like it's amazing, but I don't want to say anything about it because it'd be spo it'd be spoilers. So I, and I feel like I could describe it without spoilers, but maybe they are spoilers once we finish. I don't know. Yeah, we're only, like, like I said, we're only an hour finish. into it, so I've yet to see what everybody is um, All up arms so about. amazed about. <laughs> other than I am intrigued by the idea that you can get through the. It's a dungeon crawl. You can get through the entire game without theoretically killing anything. But is that a spoiler? Um, I don't think so. It was on the Kickstarter page. Okay, fair enough. So, let's hope not. Um, playing that. Of course, we accidentally killed somebody right away. So, um, whoops. <laughs> uh, and then I've been playing a lot of League of Legends. Finally got to Silver 3. Got close to Silver 2. Um, my brother and I have been playing that. Um, every Saturday we publish our Bronze 4 and Beyond where we talk about our league journey that week so check that out and then i've been playing diablo 3 as sort of like a side like i want to cl click some buttons and yeah. bash some monsters for 15 minutes right it's really good for that uh and i foresee that so i am not joining you in that huh? whatever we'll play with you anyway. <laughs> i didn't think so uh but yeah it's fun i haven't done this they have like season characters and i guess you get rewards for doing stuff in the season i haven't tried that but Okay. Yeah, it's fun. I got got back into it. I we always liked that. It was a uh, it was a game I was we played Diablo two a lot in high school. We would like have LAN parties and stuff to play and LAN parties. Yeah, LAN yeah, parties. Yeah, we sound so old. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Diablo three is really cool. I actually like it on the console because you can all play together. But that's a separate thing. So I'm, okay. I would play it on the PC. All right. Got anything else we want to talk about? Uh, no, I don't think so. Cool. So that's it for uh, Eclectic Gaming August. Hopefully we remember to publish the video style, unlike Eclectic Gaming July. Whoops. Um, and.